I'm delighted to announce a new collaboration with Quinn Dunkey from the Blondie Hacks channel. If you don't know Quinn, you're in for a treat. She's been posting a new video every week for four years straight, and her videos have received over 22 million views so far. Quinn is a gifted machinist and communicator, and she focuses on what can be done with hobbyist level machine tools. Even with this limited tool set, she does fine quality work, often involving complex assemblies made with close tolerances. In addition to her technical mastery, she has an unusual ability to bring clarity to whatever topic she covers, and she does it all in a low-key manner with delightful bursts of her signature humor. She has no reservations about showing when things don't go according to plan, and she always finds a graceful way to recover. Quinn recently finished a relatively large steam engine project and is building a steam plant to run it. She asked if I might be interested in making a water storage tank, and I was thrilled by the possibility. Today we'll take a look at the tank I envisioned. I'm going to roll up a strip of copper to make the body for the tank. This strip is 4 inches tall, and it's long enough to make a 5 inch diameter circle. So I made a bending fixture out of 3 inch diameter bar stock and I put a clamping strip on that to hold the edges of the metal as I bend it. So I'll push this in tight against the screws and tighten them. And I'll bend this one side at a time. So I'll bring this around all the way until it touches that clamping strip. Then I'll release the metal. Clamp it again. and roll it the other way. So the mandrel I chose gave me a tighter curve than I wanted, so I'll have to open this up a little bit. I found a cutout disc from a past project that's 5 inches in diameter, so this will be what I'll test the size of this with as I unbend it. So I've clamped a piece of scrap metal to my bench that I can hook the edge of the metal under, then I'll just kind of open this up gently. And I'll test this curve against my 5 inch disc. It needs to go just a tiny, tiny bit more. It's looking really good up to about this point. And I'll unbend it a little bit more from that point. Test it against my pattern. It's looking pretty good. I'll keep going. Almost done. And I'll hook this edge under my little holding fixture here so I can unbend the opposite end. So I'll try this against my fixture. And it's just about a perfect fit. I'm ready to weld this joint now, and I'm going to be using the TIG welding process. A lot of people are surprised to learn that you can TIG weld copper, but it welds quite easily. It is important to use a special deoxidized welding rod. If you try using strips of the parent metal or electrical wire, you're probably going to get porosity in the weld. But this deoxidized rod solves the problem. So I'm going to use the same fixture I used to roll the cylinder to hold the pieces in alignment. I want to make sure they're absolutely flush when I do the tack welding. And I want to give them a little bit of a gap at the joint. I have a piece of aluminum here that's 40 thousandths of an inch thick. That's the same as this material thickness. And I'll just get everything fixtured up so it will have that gap as I'm tack welding. And the reason I want a gap is to ensure I get full penetration. I want to have a nice trough here to drop the filler rod down into. So everything's ready to go. I'm going to tack weld this from both sides before I do the finish welding.
So the weld is completed and you can see that I have very nice penetration on the inside. I'll sand the top of the weld down flush now and I'm using 80 grit paper. And I'll flip this around and do the other side. So that's removed the bulk of the weld on the outside. I want to sand the inside a little bit as well. I'll use a smaller disc to flatten the weld on the inside. Now I'll flip this around. I'm going to work this joint with a hammer and dolly to get the final smoothness. And I'll sand this one more time. There's still a couple of small low spots that I'll raise by hammering. So the joint's completely smooth with 80 grit. I'll go over it one more time with 120 grit. And I'll hand sand that a little bit, and you'll see that we have a very, very fine finish on this. So the cylinder is finished, and we can get on to the next step. I'm going to curl the edges of the tank over now, and I'm using a beading machine outfitted with 5 16 radius round over dies. And this is a brand new machine for me. It's made by JS Tools. And I've only used this a little bit, but I'm really liking what it does. It's a great machine. So we'll put the metal into place, tighten the dies fully, and I'll step on the pedal to make the machine rotate. And I'm just keeping the edge of the tank against the guide on the bottom die, and the machine does the rest. And as soon as I make a full lap here, I'll pull it out so you can see the result. So there's the radius edge. And it worked just fine on the welded area. No problem there. So I'll spin this around and do the other side. So I've curled both the top and bottom edges. Now I'll cut the blank for the top of the tank. I've set a pair of dividers to describe a circle the same diameter as the body of the tank. And I found where the center of this circle needs to be to get the circle close to the edges of my blank of copper. And I'll make a center punch mark that will be the center of the disc. I'm going to make a half inch hole in the center of this disc. So first I'll make a small pilot hole. Then I'll use a half inch rotor brooch to make the half inch hole. Then I'll cut this disc out. I'll use a pair of tin snips to make a roughing cut. Then I'll use aircraft snips to make the curved cut. I'm going to cut off the bulk of the waste first. Then I'll make the finish cut right on the line. So there's the blank for the top of the tank. I'm going to start the forming on the top of the tank now. I'll use some rounding over dies to put a curl on the edge, but before I do, I want to shrink this edge to start dropping it down. 
So we'll be using the standard shrinker for this. And I've actually set a depth stop so it goes into the machine the same distance each time. This is optional, but it does make the project a little easier. I'm just pulling this edge down a few degrees, like 20 or 25 degrees. So I've gone all the way around this disc. I'm going to make another pass, just picking up the edge of it. So I'll set my depth stop to be a little bit shallower this time. And I'm just using very light pressure for this. So the shrinker's done a great job of dropping that edge down. But to make the curve more uniform, I'll go over to the roundover dies on the BD machine. I put a special edge guide on this machine. This just has two one-inch diameter pieces of seal stock that I can ride the edge of the metal against as it goes through the dies. So I'm going to bring these dies down a little bit at a time. We'll make one pass at this pressure setting. Go all the way around. I'll tighten it another half turn. Go all the way around. Then I'll go to full depth and make one more pass on this. So the roundover dies have done a great job of making that curve uniform. I'm going to use the Midler Brothers 2.5 inch punch and flare dies to make the opening in the top of the tank. So I'm holding the lower die in the vise for convenience and I'll assemble this and tighten the bolt by hand. I'll tighten this until the dies bottom out. And now we'll disassemble it. So there's the formed hole in the top of the tank. And this will make a beautiful opening for filling the tank. It's time to tack weld the top into place now. I'm going to just center this as best I can. Both parts are handmade so they're not completely round. And I'm just kind of evening out the differences. And then I'll put a weight on the top, and this will help hold it in position, and also it'll make sure it grounds well on the table. And then I'll just start tacking around the outer edge. I'm putting the tacks where I have the best fit up. And where the fit up isn't quite perfect, I'll tap the high spot down. So I'll check the fit up all around, and if everything looks good, we'll be ready to finish weld it. Okay, we're good to go. So the weld is finished. I'll let this cool down, and we can sand it smooth. I'm going to sand the bulk of the weld off now. I'm using 80 grit paper for this. That should be good for now. I'll do the final sanding after I get the bottom of the tank welded into place. I'm going to punch a 3 inch diameter hole in the bottom of the tank and this time I'll use a hydraulic press to apply the pressure. So 
so as you can see that does a beautiful job. Let's try the base of the tank into place and it really has a nice fit. So now it's time to think about how we're going to attach the legs to this tank. So I envision three legs like a tripod and they'll be splayed out at a 35 degree angle. So I need to have a thick piece of material for the legs to attach to. I don't have any quarter inch copper in stock so I thought I'd buy some but when I went online I found that the price of copper has gone through the roof so I'm not going to use copper. It turns out that I have a piece of quarter inch thick bronze and I'll use this instead. So it's easy to weld the bronze to the copper. So I'm going to cut a disc out of this material and I need to know what size to cut it. So the opening in the tank bottom is 3 inches 170 thousandths. So I need to cut a disc that diameter. I've set a compass to half that distance. So I'm going to put a center punch mark on this plate and use the dividers to describe a line that I'll cut on. And I also want to lay out the location of the legs. So if I use the dividers and make marks around the perimeter of this circle, it will divide the circle equally into six parts. So I'm going to draw a line from the center to every other mark and that will divide this circle into three equal sections. Now it's time to cut this disc out. I'll use a bandsaw to do the rough cutting and I'll use the lathe to size it precisely. Now I can turn this to size on the lathe. So we'll measure the diameter. And we're about two thousandths of an inch undersize, close enough for this application. So I'll put a slight chamfer on these edges. I'll flip this around to chamfer the other side. So the part is turned to size. Let's test the fit of this disc against the base of the tank. They should fit together with just light pressure. I'm very happy with that. Before I weld these parts together, I need to make the provisions for attaching the legs. And the plan is to drill and tap 1032 holes where each leg goes. Then I'll put a set screw in each hole. I'll drill and tap the end of each leg, 1032, so they can be threaded together. This will allow me to disassemble the legs, which will make it great for shipping and for cleaning. This video has run over 20 minutes, so I'll bring it to a close here. In the next video, I'll show how the tank is completed. I'll finish machining the base, weld it into place and smooth it, make the legs, make the cap, and give all the parts a bright, smooth finish. I hope you can join me then. I love making these videos and I'm honored that you're watching. Please like, subscribe, and click the bell to be notified about new videos. I read every comment and I do my best to answer all questions. If you like what I'm doing, please click the Patreon link and become one of the great people who help me create new videos. I'll see you next time.